Hi, Crime Stoppers. It's time to shave. And I got two more items in the mail from Dana. Dana, I can't, uh, I, I don't know what to say. You've been, look at, look at what he sent me, guys. It's my birthday month, you know, or, you know, my birthday is this month. He sent me this stuff from Barrister and Man, which I haven't used yet. And I'm not going to use today. And then, I think it was yesterday, day before, he also sent this. I am swimming in birthday presents from Dana. Thank you. It's, it's just too de generous. You can skip the next four or five years. You don't need to send me anything else. Thank you very much. What are we going to use today? Well, we're going to shave and we're going to use some soap and some razors and some iced watermelon. Yeah, from this company I had never heard of. It is called Shannon's Soaps Limited, handmade in Ohio. So these are all handmade, and they're made from, like, the best ingredients, and there's no artificial, you know, aluminum stearate or laurel sulfate or laurel canyon or whatever. There's all the good stuff, and they smell like iced watermelon. Check this out. It's got these little metal things. I like that. It's, it's like, jammed in there, but it's not really. But anyway, so let's lather up, shave, and see how it is. Mmm, this one smells just lightly of watermelon. Now this one has a bit of menthol in it and the aftershave has a lot of menthol in it. And look at this, look at those little, little bubbles at the bottom, do you see that? Those are a different liquid in there that isn't mixing, it's like oil and water. So that's the oil I think in there. Some sort of, it might be, it's got watermelon, it's got some spearmint, it's got menthol, but if you shake it up, then it kinda, you know, makes all the little things a little bit smaller. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to shave with this stuff. I'm going to use my fancy, ooh, golden fat boy, the executive. I believe it's 1958. Am I, am I blinding you? There we go. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. Look at that. Real gold, folks. Real tomato ketchup, Eddie. Nothing but the best, Clark. All right. Let's uh, set it on seven because that's what I put all my fat boys on. Let's put in a feather blade, which I always use. I think this is the second shave with this one. Man, this thing is... This thing is in such good shape. I lucked out so much getting that. I got that at an antique store for like 30 bucks. This is like 10 years ago. I don't know. All right. I took a shower, did my hair, put some hot water on my face. Sorry about the sunlight. I haven't gotten up to block it yet, and I figured, what the heck? It's not terrible, is it? I mean, you see every weird blemish on my skin, but uh, maybe, that's your, maybe that's your thing. I don't know. Look what else he sent me. Now, I got one of these a while back from Girl Alex, but... Little Trees Fresh Shave Scent. So it smells a little bit like, like shaving soap. All right, but today we're gonna grab the old West Coast Shaving Brush Synthetic, and we're gonna lather up the watermelon, iced watermelon. Yeah, shannonsoaps.com. I'll put a link down below. This is what it looks like. Gorgeous, it's a firm soap. It's not too soft. Put a little bit more water in here. And we'll get some of this watermelon. Ooh, it's got some spearmint in it. I'm smelling that. What a strange combination, watermelon and spearmint, but it works. And there's a little bit of menthol in this, and there's a lot more in the aftershave. So I'm looking forward to trying that out. All right. I feel like I'm just making a mess here. Okay. So what I do after I lather in, because, I, you know, I don't use a bowl because I'm lazy. I just use it in the container and then I wash out that extra and then I let it air dry like that. So tonight I'll come back in and put the lid back on. But for now, that's how I do that. Let's lather up. Ooh, that smells good. And it's very, yeah, I'm getting the spearmint too. Interesting, like the, the watermelon is a little bit more subtle. That's really interesting, I like that. See, it's, it's another one of those places I never would have heard of Shannon Soaps. I mean, I guess, like, <laughs> it's weird, but when it comes to shaving, I'm not, like, out there looking for all the newest, hottest stuff. I, 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 I learn about it sometimes. What's going on with this? And uh, people send me stuff, and so I really appreciate it. All right, let's get the old fat boy out. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to all of you, too, if it's your birthday this month or next month. Or if even if you have a birthday this year, happy birthday to you. Now, the past, well, last year and then a couple years ago and then this year, what I've done on my birthday is I've rented a convertible. Now, I don't own a convertible. I don't want to own a convertible. 
Um, cause I don't have the kind of disposable income to have like a sensible car and then also a convertible. Now I know you can buy hard top convertibles and that's close to a normal car, but I rent a convertible for like a night or two nights. This year it'll be two nights from this app called Turo, T-U-R-O. They're not sponsoring me. I just, I saw it on, uh, what is it? Doug DeMuro's channel. The guy that does all the car, uh, reviews and everything. Anyway, so it's like renting a car. Well, it is renting a car, but you're renting it from an individual that actually owns the car. You're not going to Hertz or Avis or dollar budget. And that way you can get really cool cars. Like I'm, I'm getting like, it's not a cool car. It's just a Mustang convertible 2014. So a little bit older model. Last year, I think I had a 2019, but the important thing was cheap, and convertible because I just like cruising around because I'm going to cruise out like I do every year and have for decades now. I drive out to the LBJ ranch out in the hill country because his birthday is the same as mine. And that land that makes up the LBJ ranch was my ancestral land when my family came here uh, before Texas was a state. Uh, my ancestor, William Marshall Means, uh, volunteered in the Texian army to fight the Mexicans in the, uh, the Texas Independence War. War for Texas Independence? I'm drawing a blank on the exact. Anyway, so if you did that, if you joined the army back then in 1835, 1836, and you survived, which he did, he was at the Battle of San Jacinto. He was not an active participant. He was guarding the baggage is what they call it. So that means they were guarding all their supplies and any prisoners they might have had. But you survive that, and then you were given a bunch of land because there's plenty of land here in Texas, and especially in 1836. So you were given a league and a labor of land, and that's like 1,600 acres. I mean, it was a ton of land. And all that land is now the LBJ Ranch. Now, at the time, this is where I get into my history, put on my history cap, because I'm a huge history buff, in case you didn't know that already. In the 1830s, 1840s in Texas, uh, there were native tribes that lived here, of course, and there were parts of Texas you could not live if you were a white man or a white woman. If you were an Anglo settler, you were not welcome. And the land that they were given, which is now the LBJ Ranch, was uh, populated by a Comanche and other Indian tribes. And so my family never moved there because it was too dangerous. So they never got to see this beautiful land that they were given. And eventually after like, you know, 50, 75 years, they sold it and, and moved on with their lives. But anyway, that's what I do. I have done for years because not only that, I didn't even know that until a few years ago because my mom did the genealogy that uh, that land that I had been going to just for, you know, learning about history in the 1960s and LBJ and Kennedy and civil rights movements and voting rights and great society and all the programs that LBJ did. And of course, the Vietnam War and all that stuff. Can't forget that. So I would go out there for that history stuff, general history. And then I learned that there's actually familial history there, my family, even though they never got to live there. It was just too dangerous at the time. They settled like in South Texas along the coast. They couldn't have chosen a more hot, humid, <laughs> sandy <laughs> down there south of Corpus Christi. Anyway, so what I've done, I, I go out there and I, I take the driving tour. And I like to take the driving tour in a convertible because that's what LBJ did. He would take his guests out and drive them around the ranch. And now I do the same thing, whether I take the kids out there or the wife or a friend or just myself sometimes. In fact, this time it's just going to be me because everybody's in school. All right, there's pass number two. And I rent this convertible. It's like 50 bucks a day on Turo, T-U-R-O. Check it out. I, like I said, they're not sponsoring me. And uh, you could rent Lamborghinis there. You could rent, rent those weird three-wheeler things. I don't even know what they're called. You can rent, uh, you know, they had vintage cars on there. And they're fairly reasonably priced. And since they're individuals, you don't have to go through the whole rigmarole 
of dealing with Hertz and Avis. Anyway, so I'm going to take this Mustang out there and cruise around the LBJ Ranch with the top down. It's going to be hot. This is going to be real hot. <laughs> Although it is cooler out there in the hill country, it will still be hot. So I'm looking forward to that. So if you happen to see me cruising along, wearing my cool sunglasses with the top down, <laughs> with my buddy Spuds McKenzie, the ultimate party animal, well then, uh, you know, give me, give me a little honk on the horn and give me a wave and that'll be that. All right, let's keep talking about this stuff. This stuff is so pleasant. I'm getting a lot more... Like the ice, the watermelon part is very subtle, but I think that's good because you don't want, you know, you could, you know, put a scent into a watermelon product that smells like, you know, watermelon four loco or something. <laughs> if you've ever tried watermelon four loco, and I have back during the four loco craze when it was about to get banned, I was like, I got to see what all the, the fuss is about. And oh God, so sweet. Whew. Anyway. You run the risk of uh, of making it smell fake, you know? But they did a good job. It doesn't smell fake. It just smells really pleasant. But I, I'm getting a lot more of the, the, the spearmint, but I'm getting a sweetness from the spearmint. And then a tiny bit of the menthol tingle. Not much at all. Just a tiny bit. I can't wait for the aftershave because it's got a little bit more. It says, are those little bubbles back after I shook it up? Are the bubbles back? Uh, they're kind of in there. Here they are. So interesting. Those liquids do not like getting along. They do not want to stay mixed together. But that's okay. That that obviously shows that in uh, products that they do have two, you know, disparate sort of things that don't want to go together, they use other things to make them go together. I guess. I don't know. That's where you start running into all the crazy, you know, mile-long ingredients in your shampoo bottle. It's like, what exactly do all these things do? And being a child of the 70s, I've never been one to be overly concerned with that. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing to my body. But I'll just, uh, you know, keep an eye on it. Trashy foods are my heritage. I got a couple little nicks from this executive. Ooh, executive. It's kind of beautiful. All right, let's feel here. Let's wa let's wash off and let's see. What do I want to do? Oh, I want to get there right there. Always this. Always with the pulse. Got to put my razor on the pulse. Because I always miss that part. And a little bit of this. But I don't like doing this too much on my neck because this, this skin feels kind of loose and, and it's not as tight as up here, you know. Got that turkey waddle going. <laughs> I got a couple of nicks, so I am going to use the, uh, whatchamacallit. You ever have one of those candy bars, the whatchamacallit? Now they have a, they have another candy bar called a Hoosama What's It's. I believe that's what it's called. Whatchamacallit, Hoosama What's It's. And this, an Allen Block from Shave Nation. Yeah. Oh, see all the ingredients? Oh, those aren't ingredients. Yeah. Those are directions. Sorry. Those are ingredients. The, the, the ingredients are... Potassium, alum, and water. There you go. I'm gonna put this on. Oh, ooh, ow, gosh. Oh, it burned. Ooh, did I nick my ear? You see that? I think I nicked my ears. I did. I, I took a little nick out of my ear. Oh, got a got a pierced ear. Great. Now I gotta be cool like Harrison Ford. And does Morgan Freeman have an earring? I think he does. Old guys with earrings. Man, look at that. Goodness gracious. I had no idea. Sharp blade. Watch out, kids. So kids, all the kids watching, watch yourself. I'm going to let the alum dry a little bit. This one's really not wanting to stop. Hmm. Hmm. That's okay. Now, yeah, look at that. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have one big old dumb Band-Aid on the end of my ear. You got some shaving cream there. I need to get that off. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the alum to dry a little bit. All right, that's enough. Wash it off. It's weird. It makes your fin, your skin have no, it's not smooth anymore. It's like grip. And that's what it's supposed to do. So yeah, 
Iced Watermelon from Shannon Soaps. Some good stuff. All right, let me dry off here. Ah. Well, I'm getting blood all over my towel. Oh, great. Oh, great. Okay, folks. Iced Watermelon. I'm going to shake it up so those little beads are more interspersed. Ooh, this smells stronger of watermelon. Mm. Also, it doesn't smell like Four loco, but it smells much stronger than uh, than the shaving soap did. Mm, yeah, got the mint in there too. Got the spearmint, and it is spearmint. It's not peppermint or wintergreen. But that didn't burn at all, probably because I did the alum beforehand, so that kind of shocked my nerves into their pain. So we got... Alcohol-free witch hazel, water, fragrance, menthol, and glycerin. So, yeah, soothing post-shave splash. I'll go a little bit more. I keep using that little extra soothing. Ah, soothes. So good. Actually, it does feel good. Mmm, what an interesting scent. See, I don't think that I ever would have purchased this scent in particular like i went and looked on their website and i saw one like pina colada like that that would be like one that's an instant that's a no-brainer for me pina colada and i would have been like iced watermelon maybe so thank you for doing that for me because i really do enjoy it see you got to get out of your own way sometimes in order to experience life stick one of these in your car don't worry, I'm going to pick it up in a second <laughs> anyway thanks again to dana thank you thank you thank you this is, this is just too much. Your generosity knows no bounds. I'm going to use the Barrister and Man coming up soon. Uh, if not Monday, then next week sometime. Sometime. Don't worry. It's sitting right here. I'm watching it. Every day I'm like, all right, I get to use this. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks again, Dana, for sending me all this stuff. I'll see you out at the LBJ Ranch. Bye.